Today on The Happy House, I'm going to show you how to make these delicious teriyaki chicken ramen bowls. Then for dessert, we're going to have bee sting cake, a classic in Germany. And as we take a break, I'll show you some fun and creative ideas on how to teach the song The Iron Rod to primary children. In addition to that, I'll share with you some great tips and ideas for reviewing the song Nephi's Courage in the 2020 Come Follow Me manual which also works great for other songs. Then I'll share with you another one of my favorite creations, coconut curry, along with these amazing cabbage spring rolls and a special sauce I think you'll like. All right now on The Happy House. <laughs> so on a cold day like this, pretty cold day is the perfect day for a nice warm bowl of ramen. Now it's Sunday and we decided to make this spontaneously so I don't have all the exact ingredients I would normally want to use so today we're gonna improvise. You're gonna start by peeling a fresh bulb of ginger. This is the easiest way I like to peel my ginger. From there, go ahead and slice it up. It doesn't matter if it's thick or thin because it's all going to get nicely chopped up. Once it's all diced up, add it to a pan that's on medium-high heat and put in some toasted sesame oil. Saute it until it's nice and tender. Go ahead and add a couple of handfuls of matchstick carrots. If you haven't noticed, I never use correct exact measurements. I just eyeball everything. So I use handfuls, fingerfuls, sprinkles, drops, whatever works best. Go ahead and add some sliced shiitake mushrooms. I happened to have a jar of these in my pantry. I keep all kinds of foods in my pantry because you just never know. Then you're going to add beef broth. Now, we were out of beef broth and it was Sunday, so I had to use chicken stock instead. But I had an idea to make it work. A beef bouillon cube. Now, I don't use these very often because they're high in sodium, but they sure come in handy when you need beef flavor. Then I add a little bit of rice vinegar just to give it a little bit of that tank. Then add some low sodium soy sauce. Again, you don't want this dish too salty. Now just for fun, I happen to have some mandarin teriyaki sauce from Panda Express in my fridge. And this adds just a little bit of sweetness to the dish. Now you can also use honey or a little bit of brown sugar, but you do want a little bit of sweetness in that broth. Next, I took a frozen bag of diced chicken tenders and I put that into a pan with sesame oil and I sauteed it. I added some ginger and then of course, some onion powder. I sure wish you could smell this. It smells delicious. And then I drizzled on some more of that sweet teriyaki glaze. And then I added some sea salt to enhance the flavor. Now we didn't have ramen noodles in our pantry and it was Sunday, so I used these stir fry rice noodles instead. So boil them, add the noodles to your bowl, add the broth over it, Sprinkle it with some of this rice seasoning, which I absolutely love. It really just brings out the flavor. You're going to boil an egg, slice it in half, place it on top. Garnish with some fresh cilantro. And don't forget your chopsticks. But most importantly, don't forget the chicken, which I almost did. For Manuel's birthday a few months ago, we gave him a bunch of his favorite German desserts in box mix form. Yeah, there he is spying on me. 
So every few weeks, usually on a Sunday afternoon, he'll pull down one of those boxes and make one of his favorite desserts. Now we're all about making things from scratch. I love to bake, I love to cook, so usually we do things at least semi-homemade, if not fully from scratch. But it's been fun for Manuel to make these desserts. Even though they come in a box, they still taste pretty good. And nothing beats bee sting cake. Definitely a staple dessert in Germany. So you start by making a dough with dry yeast and you let that dough rise. Then when it's time, you press it into the bottom of a round cake pan and you bake it. This is what we're hoping the result will be. And these are the instructions on the back of the box that we're following. We got this cake mix at World Market. After you bake it, you wanna slice it right through the middle like a sandwich. You can use a knife or dental floss. Next, you whip the cream together and spread it on your sandwich. I think this looks and tastes just like Bavarian cream. And you know, my favorite kind of donuts are the ones that are filled with Bavarian cream. And because Manuel is from Bavaria, he's doing this like a pro. Next, Manuel explains the secret to not messing up your cake when you slice it. You simply take the top layer of the sandwich and you already slice it like a pizza. Then you piece it back together like a puzzle so that when you do go to cut it, you simply just cut it on the lines and that way you don't massacre your cake. Now the top of this cake is roasted almonds with a sweet glaze and they taste so good. Now watch as Manuel demonstrates how much more simple this is because he had already sliced the top layer. Look how that comes out so beautiful, so clean, and so smooth. Makes you just want to eat it. And there you have it guys, bee sting cake. I like it best served chilled. So last month we talked about the Tree of Life. This is my first time ever having the calling of doing the music in primary. I've never done that before. It was my first time learning how to lead music, so I was pretty scared. But now I'm not scared at all. I've been doing this for a few weeks and it's so much fun. Now I get why everyone says this is their favorite calling. Okay, so I just want to share some ideas with you that I've created that the kids really seem to love and it really helped them learn the song. So here we have, this is when we learned about the iron rod. We learned the song, The Iron Rod. And I made a tree of life. I just made it out of packaging paper and then white poster board. Just used some glitter and some of these LED lights. We just taped it on with green frog tape. And then we put our picture of Jesus and then we just took some white yarn and we have our iron rod. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how we did this. So we taught them that the Word of God is in the scriptures. The Word of God is something that we need to hold on to our whole lives. So we had each class in the primary row by row get up and we had this tied from one end of the primary room to the other where this tree was and each class took a turn getting up and holding on to the rod while they sang the song Hold to the rod, the iron rod, and they sang the song. We had the words up on the board with pictures so they could look if they needed help. And then when they got all the way to the end, we actually had a basket of white marshmallows to be the fruit from the Tree of Life. And at the end, when they went all the way to, to the back of the room to sit back down, they got to pick a white fruit out of the basket. So as I got to the back of the room, I had someone back there holding the basket of the white marshmallows, which is the fruit of the tree of life, and they each got to take one. And I told them, as you bite into that fruit, as you bite into that marshmallow, think about what the Word of God means to you, and think about how this is God's love, and try to really feel His love as you sit down and you eat that marshmallow, as you eat that fruit. So we talked about the Word of God being the iron rod and the scriptures and we, we need to hold on to that throughout our life. But it leads us to the tree, which is God's love, and how delicious that tastes. How we should feast upon 
God's word so that we can feel God's love. So when we were ready to do this activity, we turned out the lights in the room to represent the mists of darkness, because we sing about that in the song. And so it's dark in the room, but they're holding onto the iron rod. And right before the song began, I switched on the tree of life so they could see it light up the room. So they focus their eyes on the light. We did this, we were able to get through the song twice and have the whole room get up and go around twice. So they got two marshmallows and it, we still had leftover time to learn more songs. So anyways, I just wanted to share this idea with you. If you've never had this calling before, you're looking for ideas or you're looking for a creative way to teach the iron rod, this was great and our primary kids just loved it. lesson for the first week of February talked about Nephi building a ship and sailing to the promised land, the Liahona, and how he was commanded to get metal plates and record the events of their journey to the promised land and everything going forward. So I put an ocean up along the chalkboard. It went all the way from one side of the board to the other and I laminated a ship just using packaging tape. Everything was held on the board with magnets and then I had this little map for the journey that had north, south, east, west. For the ocean, I cut out sheets of glitter foam and for the authenticity of the map, I simply burnt the edges with some fire. And they would spin the Liahona and if it landed on north, south, east, or west, they would look at the map on the board and that would tell us what verse we're singing of what song. Today we learned a new song, I Will Walk With Jesus, so that was on there as well. So when they would spin the Liahona, it would give us the direction of where we went with our music. And then depending on how well they sing and how much effort they put into the song would determine how far Nephi's boat would travel to the promised land. And if by the end of the hour we could make it all the way to the promised land, then I had something special waiting for them. So at the end of the lesson I got out my gold plates, I just went to Hobby Lobby and in the craft section I just found this brown paper book that opens and I just bought some gold leafing. Of course I used my 40% off coupon <laughs> and it was actually pretty cheap. It was just a few dollars and I glued the gold leafing around it and then I just had three bracelets. I had some gold spray paint. I spray painted the rest of the plates gold and spray painted the bracelets gold. I cut the bracelets and just put them on and then I filled the inside of the golden plates with gold chocolate coins. And at the end of the activity, I talked to them about how at the end of Nephi's journey, the Lord commanded him to record their journey and to keep a record going forward in which he would continue to record the Word of God. And we talked about how important it is to treasure up the Word of God in your heart and how we should feast upon the Word of God. So I opened up the gold plates and inside were the gold chocolate coins. And at the end of primary, I stood by the door so that on their way out, they could each take a gold coin. And I told them that as they ate that chocolate coin later to think about how delicious the Word of God is and how it truly fills us up and satisfies us and how we should be feasting on the Word of God and always treasure it in our hearts. So it was a lot of fun. So in between north, south, east, and west on the Liahona, I put these lines. So if they landed on the line, they could choose if they wanted to go with north or west, or if they landed anywhere in between these two lines, that meant north. So that's how we were able to resolve it if it didn't land exactly on a direction. And this was just a styrofoam ball I got at Hobby Lobby, and I just took permanent marker and wrote the directions on it. I spray painted it gold, and then I bought one of these little gold tacks. I just had some white cardstock I glued together. I cut out an arrow and I spray painted it gold and just punched that through with the tack. So as you can see, if I give it a spin, it spins. Anyways, they had a lot of fun with that. And I find that when the kids have visuals, when they have things to look at, and things that stimulate their mind, get them thinking, and then there's something they get to be doing so they're not just sitting in their seat. If they get to come up and help, they get to spin something. Um, they get to walk and do the, you know, the iron rod. They get to walk around the room. They get to get up while they sing. So we always do some kind of an activity where we incorporate singing with it but there's always lots to look at to stimulate their mind to get them thinking so that they're thinking about the song and what it is we're singing. And at the beginning, before we sing, I'll introduce what it is we're learning about that week and what it is we're gonna be singing, how it has to do with the Come Follow Me lesson. And then I'll always share a personal example from my own life of how I know that teaching to be true. 
and I'll bear my testimony and I'll ask them questions and get them thinking about experiences in their own lives that they can think of that relate to what we're talking about. So I get them thinking about how this applies to their lives. And then at the end, I'll bear testimony a second time of what it is we just sang about and how strong I felt the spirit and how happy I am that they participate and that they come every week and how much I love them. But I think the focus is, the goal is, is that they always feel loved no matter what. And I think that when the children see that you put time and effort into your calling, they know that you wanna be there. And when they know that you wanna be there, they feel that you really care about them. If you're taking the time to put effort into the activities and into what they're learning, they feel that you really care about them. And when children feel that you love them, they feel that you care about them, they want to be there. They want to learn, they want to participate. And that's been my experience. When I first got this calling, some of my kids told me, mom, you know, there's some kids that are noisy and disruptive and um, they're silly, they're not gonna participate and they always interrupt and disrupt music time. Um, I haven't had that experience once since I've been in this calling. Each time I come in and do the music, everybody's participating. Everyone seems excited to be there. Everyone's raising their hand. There is no talking. I hardly ever have to shh the kids. They're always listening. They're always ready for what we're going to talk about. And some of the moms have come up to me and said, you know what, this is working. Whatever it is that you're doing is working because my kids can't get these songs out of their head. They're singing them all week long. They know the words and they're excited every Sunday to come to sharing time. And, and that's important because sometimes there's kids who don't wanna be in sharing time or don't wanna be at church. So I try to make it fun, I try to make it special, but I always do my best to invite the spirit in through sharing my testimony and through taking my time with the music. And usually when we finish a song, we'll talk about it and say, oh, did you feel the spirit? Especially as we sing that one part. And I'll show them my spirit bumps. You know, I got my spirit bumps. I'm really feeling it when you sing. And that way they feel that they're providing something as well. That when they do their best to sing, they're a part, an active part of inviting the spirit into the room so that we can all be edified. It's just a wonderful feeling. I love it and today I had some children come up and hug me and I just really feel the love from them. I really feel that they appreciate what it is I'm doing and that they feel that love that I have for them. So I really, really love my new calling. <laughs> All right, so I am on an Asian kick, an Eastern kick I should say. I'm gonna show you how to make these delicious cabbage rolls to go with my coconut curry. So you first begin by boiling cabbage leaves until they're tender. Be careful as you tear them not to rip them all the way through, which is easier said than done. Next, turn the stove on medium-high and grease a frying pan with coconut oil. Add about 3 fourths of an onion, chopped, and saute them until they are tender. Because I still have matchstick carrots left over from my last recipe, I'm just choosing to use them again for my coconut curry. You could also use chopped sweet potatoes. I think sweet peppers would also be nice added to this dish. And also water chestnuts. From here you add about a can of coconut milk. And you're just going to want to stir that in until it's nice and blended and creamy. This is the base of your sauce and the base of your flavor. Next, add your curry spice and don't be shy. After all, this is the reason they call it curry. I also like to sweeten my curry with just a little bit of cinnamon. It gives it this nice flavor and just enhances it. Sometimes I also like to use white raisins. Next, add your sea salt, and again, I love this real salt because of all the minerals. It just adds to the flavor. And remember, with real salt, it's not too salty, so if you accidentally add too much, you're not gonna ruin the recipe. Next, you're going to add the half and half. This is what's going to make your sauce more liquidy. Now set this aside, and meanwhile, you're going to take a pound of ground turkey and saute it on medium high with some Worcestershire sauce. Then, of course, add onion powder. And don't forget the ginger. That's my favorite part. It really is such simple flavoring for these cabbage rolls. All you're gonna do is add a little bit of sea salt. So you just have the sea salt, the ginger, and the onion powder, and the Worcestershire sauce. 
That's all you need to flavor your meat. Then add some more matchstick carrots and saute those with your meat until they're tender. And this is gonna make up the basis of what we stuff our cabbage rolls with. Now you're gonna lay out your cabbage leaves and place a spoonful of this meat mixture onto the leaf. Then simply roll them up and you're just about done. From there, we're gonna make a dipping sauce. This is where the majority of our flavor is going to be, which is why we didn't need so much flavor in the meat. So you're gonna take some toasted sesame oil, add almost equal parts of low sodium soy sauce. You're gonna get that pretty brown color. And then we wanna add a little bit of tang, so we're gonna put in just a little bit of rice vinegar. From there, we're gonna add some ground ginger just to give it a little bit of a kick. It also sweetens it a bit. And then of course, garlic. What would any dipping sauce be without garlic, right? Then from there, you're gonna sweeten it with some brown sugar. So you have this sweet, tangy sort of soy sauce that you're gonna dip your rolls in, and it is just amazing. From there, I like to sprinkle on some more rice seasoning, and voila, you're ready to dip your cabbage rolls. I like to garnish mine with some pickled ginger, and you don't have to feel guilty about eating these rolls because they're low in carbohydrates. All right, now it's time to make the curry, and you're gonna just heat up a pan with coconut oil, and instead of rice, I like to substitute my rice with this amazing diced up butternut squash. It completely satisfies without all the carbohydrates. You're just gonna season it with some sea salt, and that is it. Sea salt and coconut oil is all you need for the flavor of this vegetable rice. From there, you're just gonna dish it into a serving bowl, and then you're gonna spoon your sauce, your curry sauce, over your butternut squash. This is so amazing. I wish you could smell it right now, and better yet, I wish you could taste it. And I want you to know that half of my kids are not fans of butternut squash, but they love this. So you're just gonna garnish it with some cilantro, make it nice and pretty, and you are ready to eat this. Now the reason we made this dinner was we wanted something to go with our sushi we bought. So we had sushi rolls, curry bowls, and these delicious cabbage spring rolls. Enjoy.